Good day, everyone. This is Alex Malou for IABC Amina. Thank you for joining us today on a very special webinar. This is the last, um, but certainly not least, webinar of 2018. I am joined, and we are joined today by Professor Anne Gregory. Uh, Anne is a lady who would need no introduction to many of us. She's the former chair of the Global Alliance. She's also, as well, the former chair of CIPR. Um, she is a lecturer and academic who has worked in the field for many years. I'm not going to say how many years, um, but today she is the chair in corporate communications at the University of Huddersfield. And she's going to be talking to us about her work when it comes to the global capability framework. So we're looking at the skills that we will need as practitioners, not just today, but tomorrow as well. So with that, Anne, I will hand over to you and let you take it forward. We will take questions at the end after Anne has finished with her presentation. Anne, over to you. Thank you very much indeed, Alex. And hello, everybody. It's great to be joining you. Uh, I'm looking out of my window here and it's a very grey, dull day. So it would be nice to be with you in person and enjoy some sunshine. But um, it's a real pleasure to be able to share the results, really, of a two-year, quarter of a million dollar global project which has helped to identify some of the common capabilities of the public relations profession worldwide and organize them in such a way that they're usable by people like you and me who want to have some sort of benchmark whereby we can say here we are in our career now and I want to move forward, I want to future proof my work and make sure that I've got a job in two, four, six years time whatever that future m might be. And it will be a very different future, as we know, with artificial intelligence and all sorts of other IT developments coming down the track uh, more quickly than we can, can actually work through. So um, another feature of today is that I'm going to try and get you to test for yourself the Global Capabilities Framework. And I'll show you the, the website and we can um, have a, a little experiment on, on you do benchmarking your own capabilities and then setting some targets for your own professional development for six months into the future. And you'll be able to go back to that and, and refer to it and develop for yourself your own development pathway. So before I uh, get on with the webinar itself, I just want to give you a, a little bit of background to the Global Capability Framework about why it was developed and by who, and to, to show you the capabilities, and then to tell you a little bit about what comes next as well. So by the end of this session then, you'll be able to understand why we've got this Global Capability Framework. And I was at an IABC meeting in Australia in September and it was incredibly well received there. So although at the moment IABC is not a member of the Global Alliance, you have been a really valued member. And I know that IABC is full square behind this development. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to test your capability, as we say, and to map out a professional development plan, which is unique to you. And that last point is really important because often in capability programs, professional associations like the CIPR have traditionally be quite, been quite rigid about saying if you want to progress from being a junior to a senior practitioner, these are the steps that you have to go through. Um, but that was a couple of years ago, and now the CIPR, along with other professional bodies, have recognized that the way that we progress through our careers is not in a uniform way. We don't move from being a junior practitioner to being a senior practitioner in everything. When I was a practitioner and I worked in the financial services industry, I, I have to say at the end, you know, I didn't know an awful lot about lobbying because even though as a senior practitioner, because that was done on behalf of our professional association who lobbied government, but I was not too bad at media relations. So my own career, I was an expert in some things, but not expert in another. And therefore to expect me to reach a level, senior level in everything was just not realistic for me. And therefore, this capability program takes account of that and recognizes that we have our own aspirations, our own 
career pathways to pursue and that this framework should be as adaptable as possible. So let me just tell you a little bit about it then. Um, I mentioned it's a project of the Global Alliance, which is the confederation of the professional associations around the world. And it was developed because Global Alliance members, such as the Public Relations Society of America, the uh, Public Relations Institute of uh, uh, New Zealand, were asking questions about the fact that as we are a globalizing profession, how do we know that practice in New Zealand can be benchmarked? How, how can we benchmark that practice against maybe practice in Argentina? When I say I'm a junior practitioner, do we have a common understanding about that? A lot of us work across boundaries. Many of you will work across national boundaries. Um, and do we know that when we use words and phrases, when we have expectations about how we're going to perform in different contexts, do we know that we're talking about the same thing? So trying to develop a common framework to benchmark our activities was regarded as an absolutely essential for our profession right now. So what we did was to put together a global research team and here are the suspects. So um, you can see my, my, my picture at the top there because it was my privilege along with my colleague Johanna Fawkes to actually lead this project. And you can see there there were representative academics from uh, Argentina, Australia, Canada, Singapore, Spain, South Africa, Sweden and the United States of America as well. And uh, uh, Professor Katrina Tetsuro's uh, just highlighted there is, is over in Australia at the moment uh, working on this capabilities project. So nine nations, six continents involved. There was nobody, unfortunately, from the Middle East. And uh, so our plan is to roll out the research over this next two or three years. So we've got countries like Indonesia, Colombia. It would be great if there was somebody from uh, the Emirates or, or the Middle East joining us to do some research on the particular characteristics of the profession in your part of the world as well. And we were given a brief which was to develop a capability framework which was of practical use to you that actually honoured the variations in practice around the world, that it was future-proof to forward-looking and that it met rigorous standards. So what happened was that each of these countries built their own country framework doing a series of, of, uh, of steps in research. So we set up an expert panel, we did surveys, we held focus groups and we then put, uh, all met in London and we looked at those national frameworks and, and decided over a two day period of rigorous de debate which capabilities we could put together into a common global framework so that people working in Spain, for example, um, if they went to Canada or Argentina, would say, yeah, I recognize these as the core elements of being a professional wherever I work during the world. Now, just to give you a little bit of background, there's two ways in which capability frameworks like this are normally built. The first one is to go from the micro to the macro. So we make lists of all the tasks and roles that we undertake and uh, we come up with knowledge and skills and attributes and behaviours. We build a profession of a picture of the profession from the bottom up. And in fact, that was done as the first part of this Global Capabilities Project with GA. And I want to acknowledge the work of my good friend Jean Balin in Canada and also Adrian Cropley, who's a uh, former president of the IABC, who did a lot of work on putting together this list of, of key skills, knowledge, uh, attributes and behaviours. The, and they looked at over 30 frameworks and 900 pages of, of, of different sorts of competency frameworks and academic frameworks and practitioner frameworks. Um, and we ended up with a really long, exhaustive list, as you can imagine. And that was a fantastic foundational work, but it was a little bit unwieldy to use. And also, because we worked in English, 
it was it was felt to be really quite western centric and not sensitive really to the differences in the profession around the world and because it was built from existing frameworks it was of the present or even backward looking some of these frameworks were nine years old and therefore we needed a different approach so what i've just described are often known as competency frameworks so we took the capability approach and capability capability looks at the other end of the telescope so it tries to describe the scope of the profession in as few a number of statements as possible while trying to capture all its richness and breadth so you end up with a few number of statements so it's manageable in length and they are quite generic statements about what we do so it means that they can be applied in whatever context is appropriate so if you're working in dubai you can take those general statements and say in my context this is what i understand this to mean and that's perfectly good and also these statements tend to be relatively timeless and because there aren't a huge number of them you can update them uh, fairly easily so they're not located in a geography but they're also not located in a specialism. So you won't see in the capabilities that I'm going to show you internal communications or government communications or community relations. These are generic abilities, capabilities of people who work in public relations. So we followed this second route. Um, it's all about potential. It's about an ability to choose a career pathway that's right for you and therefore the capabilities that are right for you within the framework of what is appropriate, maybe of your own professional body or the region in which you work. It's future looking and it's about us as in individuals and about the profession as a whole. So what I'd like to do now is reveal what these capabilities are. So here they are. So there are 11 capabilities grouped under three headings. I won't go through all the laborious work that was done to, to produce these capabilities. I've, I've outlined it briefly, but these 11 are regarded as being applicable worldwide, globally, and are the essential core statements that in their totality describe our profession. So you can see they're grouped in three headings. There are things that are unique to us as a communication profession. So the communication capabilities there. There are things that we contribute to our organization. So we are not just specialists in communication and public relations. We contribute substantially to our organizations more widely. And then there are things that we group under professional capabilities that maybe any professional would would want to describe themselves as having these capabilities. So, for example, to be a valued counsellor and to be a trusted advisor, a lawyer would want to be that, an accountant would want to be that. And to work within ethical frameworks, again, other professions would um, embrace those capabilities. They're right at the core of being a professional uh, of being a professional so let me just unpack some of these a little bit i'm going to go to one capability in each of the under each of those three headings and then show you the range of sub capabilities so each of these capabilities are supported by three or four statements that try to unpack it a little bit and give it some meaning so here's I'm one ask in favor yeah on your screen can you just click the orange arrow so we minimize the um the go to webinar there yep perfect okay. so yeah it's clear now great okay so this is one of the communication sub capabilities and one of them was to align communication strategies with organizational purpose and values and you can see there the sub capabilities try to unpack that a little bit so you set clear communication objectives that are aligned with organizational objectives and you make sure that things happen. You develop, you're an architect of communication plans which contribute to the purpose, values and policies of your organization. 
you understand how communication can help to realize um, organizational objectives but really importantly you don't take everybody's problem and say that it can be solved through communication so you you also are able to say what communication cannot do so if you're working for a government communication cannot make a, a bad policy good so that's a communication capability here's one that's uh, that's an organizational one to build and enhance organizational reputation so here are four sub capabilities so you advise on key issues and risks for the organization so that keeping the organizational organization safe from harm and therefore damage to its reputation you're helping the organization define in the first place so you're connected to all sorts of groups internally and externally and you can help the organization determine whether its purpose and values are going to be supported by those particular groups and how you making public statements about your purpose and values are likely to be received by them shaping organizational culture and yes it's processes as well so you can't claim to be customer agile if it takes four hours to get through on the phone and to manage the intangible assets of the organization like its brand its culture and its aspirations for sustainability so moving on there to these professional sub capabilities and capabilities to work within an ethical framework on behalf of the organization and in accordance with our own professional codes and society's expectations so i'll just give you a second just to read through those and then just pull out one so that last one there recognizes that we as professionals in the public relations field have obligations to society as well and that's really important so ethics is a foundational principle for anybody calling themselves a professional so that's uh, why i pulled that one out so um this research has showed that there's uh, quite a broad alignment on, on capabilities around the world. Uh, we spent two days deciding what these core global capabilities should be. But actually, you could see there was a good provenance in most of the nine country frameworks that we developed for these uh, global capabilities. We do recognize that there are these cultural, geographic and, yeah. and maturity differences as well. You know, we have emerging nations where the public relations profession is only just developing and you've got other countries where it's well established. So we can't expect it to be the same around the world. And those sorts of statements don't say to what degree you have to have these capabilities. They say that they're important. And it's up to you in your context to decide what level of capability is appropriate. We also found that the framework was, was being used actually by practitioners when we piloted this as an external point of reference that they could use in their own internal organizations to claim some of this territory. So to be a trusted counselor and to advise on reputational risk, for example, People have been going to, colleague uh, practitioners have been going to senior management and say, it's not just me that's saying this, you know. This global capability framework asserts that this is the role of somebody who, who's in my profession. We've also found when we've been piloting it as well, uh, that the this framework has been helpful for us to explain what we do within our organizations and just the sheer breadth of our role becomes very obvious when you look at these capabilities and it helps us just to decide for ourselves in our context in our context what's appropriate for us so one of the nice things about this capability framework is that we've actually developed some software to underpin it 
So on the left hand side of your screen now you can see, and this is what we'll do in a, in a couple of minutes time, you can develop a personal profile for yourself. So you can determine um, for yourself now what uh, your own capabilities are on the 11 main co capabilities that we've uh, highlighted in this presentation right now. Or you can go to the more detailed sub capabilities if you want. And then you can plot for yourself what you'd like those capabilities to be in six months or a year or five years time. So that helps you with your personal development. And then on the left hand side of the screen, and unfortunately we won't have time to do this today, you can actually develop a team profile. So if you've got an office of 12 professionals, for example, you can then do a profile for each of your team members and you can see here, this is a, an actual a one, a, a, anonymized. Um, you can then see where the strengths and weaknesses of the team are. And you can decide on recruitment based on this. Or, again, you know your context. It may be that actually acting as a trusted advisor, which is a low one there, is not something you want to do within your team. Uh, I'm sure you would. You can see it's low. So as a team, you might want to go away for an away day and do some work on that. So uh, this is quite a useful tool for you to do more holistic planning for development across team members. So um, the software, as I say, allows you to look at team strengths, drop, drop job ads, prepare for appraisal or promotion, so you can argue for resources to say, this is, this is a capability I need to develop. So please, can I go on a course, or I need to buy some books, or I need to get some mentoring in this area. You can argue for more responsibilities, because again, the framework en encompasses descriptions of the, of the wider role that we have, and we can set long-term career goals. So I'm I'm going to pause there, Alex, just to see if there's any questions, and then we can go on to, to test the software, if you like. Okay, that sounds good. Does anybody have any questions? If you do, can you please put them in the, uh, in the question box? And what I can do, sorry, I'll just go back here, just escape from this screen. Uh, what I can do is to show you how to get on the uh, Global Capabilities website. If you open a, a window, which I'm doing here, it's ever such a simple URL. So if you put in HUD, which is an abbreviation for my university, dot AC slash ECT, not ETC, um, and just uh, put that in. You can uh, you go to this website here, which is the website for the Capability Project, and you just click on the Global Capability Framework brochure, and you can download the whole uh, PDF of the brochure. And you can see if you go to part six here, sorry, page six, all the capabilities explained in detail. So uh, that's the URL. So there again, it's uh, hud.ac.uk. I'll just put that to one side and ask if there are any questions. And I've got a question for you. Let me start it off. Um, if we want to add to the, the country uh, level uh, research, how can we do that? Yes, the way that we've done it in other countries, Alex, is that we have a, a, a nominated academic. And uh, so that academic we um, is used to doing research, clearly. An experienced academic is what we would need. And we will give them the research instruments to actually undertake the work with the practitioner communication uh, community in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, for example. In, in the Emirates or, or wider, and um, there's a protocol where we, we set up an ex expert panel to first try to identify the core capabilities within your area, 
and then um, then we test those quite exhaustively and we come up with a capability set that is appropriate for the Emirates, for example. So you need to identify an academic and then working with a professional association such as IABC, so the academic has got access to substantial practitioner communities, we can get this done. And you could do the, you could actually do the work probably in six months to come up one with a, a, um, a capability framework specifically for your region. Okay, thanks, sir. Any other questions? I think we don't have anything as of yet, Anne, but should we, should we go to the testing? Yeah, okay. So over to you then. Um, I've, uh, I'll just go back to the main presentation again and just change the display settings. So I minimize that. So over to you then, here comes the button. So can you go to this website here? Global is gcbc.co.uk. So it's, it's, you should be able to do this on your mobile as well. So gcbp.co.uk. And then you click on to the login, which is there on the right hand side. And then you need to just put in your email. Okay, and there's a password that I've already put in. You just make up a password. You don't have to put in your, your private email. You can make up an email for the purposes of this test. And then you'll need to just go to the register site Either I'm actually logged in as, as a user, as you can imagine. So I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes to, to register, and then I'll join you on the, the login site. This would be work when I tested earlier. Give me a shout, Alex, when uh, you've been able to do that. That would be great. So there's a little introduction there, and you'll find the 11 capabilities listed on this site here. So, have you been able to get in? It's taking a minute. Okay. Give you another second. To get the IABC up there, didn't we, as well? We should do. How are you doing? Still having a little bit of issue logging in. Is anybody else been able to log in? Uh, can you can and can you just go through it again? Yeah. Your login. So you'll need to go to this site here, gcbp.co.uk, and it will take you to a registration page. Um, you, you need to click on login and then um, you can log in. You can use any pretend email or your actual email if you want and uh, you need to register. I, I'm logged in already. Oops. I'll just go back in. Hello, are you there? Yep. 
right, okay. See, it works perfectly every time, doesn't it? When you uh, just... Uh, the beauty of technology. Technology is a wonderful thing. So this is the, the website here, gcbpr.co.uk. So I can just put that in again. gcpr.co.uk. Now, oh yeah, let me get back again. GCBP, be right. Good idea if I used it properly. There we are. Shall I just demonstrate this? Would you think this one might be helpful and you can uh, yeah. get online at leisure? Let's get yeah, let's demonstrate it from yours. Okay, so what you do is you go to the framework then. So there we are. And I'm going to set myself some targets for developing my capabilities let's let's say a year okay so this time i'm preparing for my appraisal and the full assessment is all the capabilities but rather than do them all i'm just going to do the core assessment so the 11 core capabilities um, and what you get here is the first one to align communication strategies with organizational purpose and values I have to rate my current aptitude on this. So uh, what we do is we just do a slide like that. So if I think I'm really good, I go to the top, but maybe I'm about 50% worth there. So I'll, I'll put that there. And then I want to develop myself on this. So what do I want to be? Well, I'd like to be really good at that, so maybe I'll, but I'm realistic, it's a year, so maybe 75%. So I'll just go to, I'll, I'll do that. And then and this you might do in discussion with your manager. So I'll go to the next one. So to build and enhance organizational reputation. Well, I'm not right, I'm not very good at that at the moment. And I think that's a bit beyond me. So I, I think I'm gonna stay where I am for that one. I can't develop everything all at once, so. I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with where I am on that one. Next one, to communicate effectively across the full range of, well, I, I should be pretty good at that. I'm an experienced practitioner, but I would like to be even better, maybe a bit better than I think. Let, let's see how that uh, comes out. And then to conduct research. Yeah, I do do that, but I don't have enough opportunity to do that. Um, I'd like to do more, and I, I'm not very well trained in research skills, so I need to do a lot of development on that. So that's how I'll put, I'll set my sights high for that one. So developing others and self and others in doing professional learning. Yeah, I really do need to invest in myself. I've not done too badly on that one, but I really do need to spend some more time just developing my skills more so time's limited so again i'm going to be realistic about that one so next one relationships of trust yeah uh, well I, I think i'm all right on that one so i'm going to stick with that one next one communicate what well, i think i'm really good at issues management so i'm going to rate myself highly on that one always need to keep up, keep up to date so i'll do a bit of development on that one but not too much to offer organizational leadership well i must admit i've got some ground to make up on that one and i'm not sure i'm going to have the opportunity because my senior manager does that so I, again i'm not going to be stupid about that i think that i'll as I get promoted, I'll have more opportunity to do that, maybe in two years' time. Contextual intelligence, so understanding what's going on around the organization. Yep, I, I'm pretty good at, I do a lot of environmental scanning and I, I monitor the media. Could do could do better, I, I, I think again. I'm, I'm not too bad at that one, so I'm going to rate myself like that one. Uh, provided count. 
Well, again, my senior manager does all the uh, value counsel. I, I counsel maybe lower down the organisation, but I've got to be realistic again and just rate myself something like that. And to work within an ethical framework, yeah, I'm really hot on ethics. I think I have to do this really well. And I need to keep myself up to date. I know Global Alliance is bringing up a new ethical code shortly, so I need to make sure I'm up to date. So that's the 11 capabilities done and ranked and where I'd like to be in a year's time, so I just save and finish. So, oh, immediately. This is where I am now, okay? So I can see the little, all the capabilities are listed there. I've got a really patchy profile. I'm really good at some things really great by the looks of it at number seven which is uh, addressing communication uh, problems proactively but less good at others and that's the reality that's actually what most uh, of us would uh, would recognize i'm now going to add to that where i want to be in a year's time that's what i said i wanted to do so score on my date in 12 months time and look at that I've got my career plan map for me there. I need to do a lot of work in this area. I'm way down and I need to get up to speed quickly. On these areas down here, not so much. I, I, I'm satisfied with where I am. My boss, who I've sat by me while I do this, is satisfied where I am. So I'm going to spend my time in the next 12 months developing capability number one which is about aligning communication strategies with organizational purpose and values. I need to go on some courses about strategic planning of communications. And on number four as well, that's high one, to conduct formative and valuative research. So I need to make sure that my the campaigns that I'm responsible for are really, really well founded. And I'll, I need to go and do some serious research methods training. So those are going to be my two huge development needs for next year. You can see the value of this. It makes it very graphic. It shows you where your strengths and weaknesses are. It opens up the opportunity to have some discussions. And as I mentioned earlier, you can do this for the whole team as well. So uh, these could well be individuals. And uh, you can see that this is a bit of a lopsided team. If it was the team profiles, where some, some real weaknesses here that maybe we need to start addressing or maybe recruiting some new people. So that is, uh, that's just a quick demonstration of the capabilities framework. Um, it's really interesting. You can scope this out, as I say, over a, a, a number of years. So this is just 12 months, but I could do another one for five years time. And I could, um, again, on the team radar, I could do one for where we are now and where we are in the future and see how the team is developing over time and use that for planning maybe uh, away days where we can do uh, development work as a team. So just going back then to the uh, global, cap sorry, to my presentation, that's where we are. Um, that's a little bit about the global capability framework. It's designed to help you keep up to date with your future development needs as well as benchmarking what your current needs are. And what it's trying to do is to get you looking forward about and considering your potential as a practitioner. It's not what you've done in the past and what you're good at now, but to try and get you to realize your full potential in the context in which you work now and to think about the development needs that you might have into the future. Maybe you're planning to change your role within your current organization, or maybe, maybe you're looking for another job elsewhere. And you can use this little tool to help benchmark yourself, maybe against the job specification that is, uh, that is available for that job that you'd like to move into and help you make some judgments about whether you're ready for that career step or to ask your new employer, or if you're going to a different job in the same organization, for development. They always ask you, don't you? Don't they? Uh, where do you think 
you need development. Well, here you've got some hard evidence rather than just having to think on your feet. So, so that's it. That's the global capability framework along with the little tool. Um, the slide deck is available to you, so you can go to the website that I've, I've shown here. And uh, if you do it on a laptop or on a desktop, it's uh, much, much quicker than doing it on your mobile. It's quite complicated software, as you can see, so it takes a little bit of loading up. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions. And, and thank you, Alex, for giving me this opportunity to share with colleagues what, uh, what the capabilities framework is all about. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Anne. Does anybody have any questions before we close this off? I think I see one question from Leslie. Leslie, can you just write your question in the uh, in the question box? So just while that question's coming through, um, we have tested this. I mentioned in Australia, in in the US. Um, I know you discussed it uh, in, uh, at a big global meeting in Jakarta recently, Alex. Um, it would be really good to get your thoughts as well, because I know you were talking to global leaders of the profession about how this can be used and uh, how it needs to be developed. I right, so think it's a tool that we could all benefit from using, and especially when you think how few tools there are, development tools focused on communications professionals and the communications function. So thank you for, for the work you've done. Leslie, do you, do you have a question coming through? Are you OK? okay I think she is. No, she is good. So I think with that, Anne, I wanted to say thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure hearing you speak about how we can future-proof our own capabilities and what we can do in terms of planning. And if anybody wants to get hold of you, what is the best way to do it? Yes, you can email me on a.gregory at hud.acuk. And I mentioned the uh, the framework is available at hudhud.ac slash ect and uh, is freely available to everybody. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Anne. And uh, I want to wish you all a very happy Christmas, a very Merry Christmas, even a Happy New Year. And uh, we will catch up with you once the new year is over. Till then, take care. And thank you for having me. Goodbye and happy Christmas.